to be here too. Yes. The Lord uh, blessed us greatly at the Sunday school this morning. Um, if you miss that, please ensure that you don't miss it, uh, miss it next time because um, that is when our service actually starts with Sunday school. Um, that is. God bless you once again for coming. We are I'm so thankful to God who has been here before we even got here and who has been blessing us. We also want to appreciate the choir for starting with us 
Um, we had an organ voluntary by Brother Mike, and then this was followed by the choir singing, Worthy is the Lamb by William J. Gaither, and then Send a Great Reviver by B.B. McKinney, and then we just had that trio now, and, um, No Silver, No Gold, by Sister Tokwe, Sister Faith, and Brother Ayo. Ajibola, God bless them all for the rendition. Okay, we will now be singing um, collectively as a congregation, and Sister Comfort Akaka will be our song leader this morning, starting with hymn 198 from CGS. Um, to our internet, internet audience, this is Apostolic Faith Mission, UK. This is Bexley Branch of the church, and we are located at number 13, Penhe Road in Bexley, DA53EP. You're very much welcome to join us if you live locally. Um, otherwise, when next you are visiting, please take the time to worship with us, and God will bless you. Amen. We will now start singing as Sister Comfort comes forward to lead us. God bless you. Amen. closer work. Just for a closer work, we will take verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Thank you. 
our next song is just a short chorus. Um, Messiah is the king of kings. And we are going to sing it two times over. Messiah is the king of kings. <laughs> is the king of kings yes. and the lord of lords yes. may his name be praised Amen. our next song is jesus lamb of god jesus lamb of god God, it can never be enough, for that is what the songwriter says. If we have a thousand tongues to sing, it can never praise God enough, but may God receive our thanks. Amen. Our next short chorus is, why worry when you can pray? Why worry? Oh, 
from CGS number 486. CGS 486. 486. We are going to take two verses, verses 1 and 2. to take verses 1, 2, and 4. Verses 1 and 2 sitting down, and we shall stand up to sing verse 4, and remain standing to be led in prayer. Silent before it. Amen. 
Lord, in one of our renditions, he said, keep close to Jesus. Keep close to Jesus. We want to keep nearer and nearer today. We don't want to stray. We want to focus on you, O oh Lord. Lord, look down in mercy. We want revival. Revive us again. Revive us again. Both the old and young, the deity, the laity, the, the congregation, the priest, everyone, we want revival. Amen. We want revival. Amen. We're not just speaking it. We want to put our mind to it as we come in penitence this morning. Amen. We believe that you're, you're going to revive us. Amen. We believe that the Holy Spirit will permeate this service and you will speak through the preacher. At the end of the service, we all want to fall on our knees and we want to feel your presence. Come down, O oh Lord. Revive us again as in the old time way. He said, look warmness, I will spew out. He said that you are cold or you are warm. We don't want to be cold. We want to be on fire for thee, O oh Lord. Revive us. Save souls this morning. Sanctify, O oh Lord. Baptize, O oh Lord. Heal the sick. We have a brother in the hospital who needs serious healing. Lord, he said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by thy stripe, we are made old. Yes, that has been from ages to ages. Yes, you never fail. Yes, you never, it's not God of yesterday and not of today. Yes, it's our God forever. Yes, the Gilead Bam, the Sutin Bam. Yes, Apply, O oh Lord. Yes, touch him yes, with your divine touch. Yes, Raise him up, O oh Lord. Yes, Speak a word, O oh Lord. Yes, and as many as are looking forward to healing, yes, Lord, touch them, O oh Lord. Yes, this morning, and thou our preacher, Amen. and thou all of us, Amen. once again, speak to our heart. Amen. We have opened our heart to thee. Yes. We want to feel your presence. Yes. We want to feel the revival, yes. starting from our home, yes. into the church, yes. in yes. everywhere we go, yes. into our continents. Yes. Lord, revive, oh Lord. Yes. And we know by the time we shall leave this place, yes. we shall be revived. Yes. You will have saved souls and sanctified yes. and baptized. Yes. That we have cause to glorify your holy name. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yes. Once again, a warm welcome to everyone attending our service this morning and those um, that are watching us on the internet we pray that god that is blessing us in the sanctuary here will bless you wherever you are located um, we want to also um, say that brother mark our pastor is not around this morning as you will have observed uh, he and his family are currently worshiping with our church in birmingham so we want to pray that god will bless their ministry there and he will bring them safely back. Amen. Well, our revival prayer meetings continue um, this evening at 5 o'clock. We will hold our virtual prayer meeting. If you haven't been part of it, we urge you to please be part of it tonight. And you can be sure that God has been blessing us. We bless you too. Amen. And during the week from Monday to Thursday, we will be continuing this prayer from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Um, it's um, a time of revival indeed, and it would not be nice for any of us to be left behind at this time. So please do ensure that you join. And on Friday from 8 to 9 p.m., we will also have this prayer meeting. And then for the week, the last one will be on Saturday from 8 to 9 a.m., we look forward to seeing you virtually. Um, next Sunday, should the Lord tarry, we will start uh, Sunday activities with our Sunday school for all ages at 10 o'clock. And then devotional service will follow at 11.15 as we are having it now. And we will again have our combined virtual prayer meeting at 5 p.m. next week Sunday. Remember, as it was previously announced, that our annual camp meeting is scheduled for the 23rd to the 31st of July this year, and registration has started already. It is 
all online now. You can register and make your payment online. Uh, we did send out this call during the week, and we also sent out everyone the link uh, by which to register. It's actually on our website. Um, if you do not know how to do this, just speak to one of the ushers, and they'll be happy to show you how to do it. Remember that upon registration, um, there is a payment of £50, which is a deposit towards your, towards your fee, but it's a non-refundable deposit, so we just want to see that you are committed to attending before you register, because it is this registration that will be used for planning purposes for the camp meeting. Um, we urge everyone, as many as um, possible, to please register, as we are sure the Lord is going to bless us. Okay, we will now continue with our service while we listen to the first special, My Father Watches Over Me. That's going to be a solo, and that song is by H. Gabriel. And then we'll have the scripture reading, which Bro Banji is going to bring, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 to verse 14. And then we have the last special, which is um, to be sung by the choir, A Clean Heart, by Fred H. Baish. Thereafter, we'll listen to the word of exhortation, and then we'll have the closing song before we have the altar call to pray. God bless you all. <laughs> Shepherd gets his lonely 
sheep and true their gloom. It led me home, my heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know. Scripture reading this morning is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 7. First Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 to 14. First Samuel 7, 1 to 14. And the men of Kijaf Jerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill, and, sancti and sanctified Eleazar, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. Two, and it came to pass, when the ark abode in Kijaf Jerim, that the time was long, for it was twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Three, and Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. For then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtoreth and served the Lord only. Five, and Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpeh, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. Six, and they gathered together to Mizpeh and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpeh. Seven, and when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpeh, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. Eight, and the children of Israel said unto Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. Nine, and Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. Amen. Ten, and as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to the battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered Amen. with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomforted them. And they were smitten before Israel. Amen. Eleven. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpeh and pursued the Philistines and smote them. And they came up under Bethka. Twelve. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpeh and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto had the Lord helped us. Amen. Thirteen, so the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Fourteen, the last verse. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored 
to Israel from Ekron even unto Gath. And the coast thereof did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Chronicles 
chapter 7, verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. Amen. No, you didn't hear what I said. I have heard thy prayer. Amen. I don't think you got it. I, God, have heard thy prayer. Amen. And have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Amen. 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 We're talking of God speaking here. Yes. I read that place again. It says, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. We've been praying a while now. The people of God, God has moved them to take us into a time of prayer. And how wonderful it would be if God can meet you, meet me, where we're praying. And see, like he said to Solomon, I the Lord God have heard thy prayer Amen. and have chosen you Amen. as to myself Amen. for a means, a place of an acceptable sacrifice. Amen. May the Lord do that for us. Amen. God wants to revive us. Amen. God wants to revive you. He wants to revive me. And God is going to speak to us this morning. Himself. Forget about the preacher. God wants to speak. Yeah. And may God himself speak. Yeah. Conditions for revival. Yeah. That verse we read. It was talking of a time when Solomon was so close to God. God was close to him. And God could come down and speak to him. And we heard there what Solomon, what God spoke to Solomon. That closeness, that relationship was so beautiful, was so strong, was so unique. It reminds me of the relationship of a newly married couple when they take off for the honeymoon. You know, the time of honeymoon is a different time. It's a different time. Forget courtship. That was, that was nice, but honeymoon... That is moon in wherever. Yeah, that is honey in. And you see, some, they don't only go to the moon to get the honey. They go into the moon. Why? You know, there are only some certain boundaries in the courtship. But now, I am with my wife. You are with your spouse. This is actually our home. We are now one. We, that relationship is strong. There is nothing at that point in time that ever wants to happen. And uh, you and me, God wants to bring us into that kind of relationship with him. It is a wonderful, beautiful start. Those of us who have been there, we know what we're talking about. But you see, like I think it was Brabant, you preached last week. He said... Unfortunately, in this life, what goes up, no matter how you try and whatever, at some point, it must come and land back on ground level. But you see, the thing is, God opens some people's eyes. They realize that, okay, honeymoon may be for a week, two weeks, but this, my relationship with my new spouse, it's going to work. It is going to work. Amen. It is going to, it's not a relationship for two weeks. It's not a relationship. It's not, boy, it's not boyfriend, girlfriend we're talking about here. This relationship is long term. Yes. This relationship is till we die. Yes. It's going to work. Yes. And they already, already begin to put their hearts and minds into it. Okay, Lord Jesus Christ, help us. What are we going to do? Because after that two weeks or however many weeks on the moon, if you like, take a year. God bless you. But after that, we come back to ground level. We come back home. Everybody begins, we begin to work out how actually we make things work. I got to go to work. You got to go to work. And things have got to be done. And 
at that point is where those who have been, whom God has opened their eyes, begin to know that, okay, the family that prays together stays together. That must be the bedrock of our home. Okay, it's going to take work, this thing. It's, it's going to take effort because things are going to come to try and blow things off course. But me and my husband, me and my wife, no, we're in this thing for a long time. And they both begin to work at it. I don't know if you've ever seen a newly married wife at home in her home, in her new home. Even a newly married husband in his home. Man, that home is something else. Because at that very beginning, everything must work. There is nothing that cannot work. Whatever it is that is trying to, it must work. It must be put into, it must work. This is our home. It's going to work. That is the way that a true child of God who understands his relationship with God mm. takes his relationship with God, mm. takes her relationship with God. Mm. God, this is more than honeymoon. God, this relationship, my relationship with you, I want it like Solomon's relationship, and I want it continually. But you see, sometimes things happen, and maybe I want my own way. Spouse wants their own way. And bit by bit, where we were once like this, things can begin to become like this. And it, 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 things begin to happen that shouldn't happen. May God forbid that. But you see, you who want to get into marriage, be prepared for hard work. Mm. Nobody is discouraging you. Nobody is saying marriage is not a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. It's a wonderful thing. Mm. It makes you strong and it gives you stamina. Mm. Yes, it does. Mm. But you better know there's hard work. I mean hard work. Mm. And that is why a Christian is not a lazy person. You cannot be lazy and survive spiritually. It don't work. Mm. It simply does not work. And so, possibly, the relationship can come to a point where there's leanness in that relationship. Leanness. Because they want their own way. I want my own way. And rather than, okay, 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 come, let's come together. Well, this is the reason why I'm saying we should do it this way. No, 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 but you've not considered this. You've not looked at, this is the reason why I'm saying, okay, I understand, okay, right, okay. What if we do it like this, and then add from what you said, put it like, yeah, 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 yeah that's fine, that will work. They're back again. Mm. That relationship is mended. Mm. They're back on. Mm. Oh, may God help us. Amen. May God help us. Amen. You know, we can begin to see how important it is in the physical how much then more? It is so more important in the spiritual. Because things can happen. They say life happens. Yeah. <laughs> life is not always very kind. And if we pursue him wanting our own ways, Psalm 106 verse 15 tells us that God gave them, let them have their own way, but he sent leanness into their soul. And that leanness can come to a stage where we don't feel so close to God anymore. That revival that was burning is no more burning. In fact, we need spiritual CPR to get back alive. And who knows why God has called for such a time as this? Who knows what God has seen? And God is saying, if things get so bad, that after I've spoken to you, because you see, my spirit will not always strive with man. After I've tried to speak to you, you don't want to listen. I've, 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 I've tried to get at you whichever way. You don't want to know, okay? Remember, I'm still God. <laughs> I still have the final say. Verse 13 says, If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, when there's no rain, 
That's a big problem. You go to those countries and areas of the world where there's not been rain for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, a year, two years, you will know that it's a problem not to have rain. If you've got no rain, you've got no food. Starvation is a very real thing. God says, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, but God doesn't only stop there. He's saying, if I've done that and you still haven't come back, you still haven't caught the message. And on top of that, I've got to add, I command my locusts to devour the land. <laughs> you know, people of God, let us fear God. God is to be feared. Joel 2.25 tells us about God's caterpillar, palmer worm, kanker worm. They are little pests and some will call them pets. Maybe your little child take one, put it in a jar. I will look at it. Oh, it's crawling, is it? But when God turns those things into an army against you, you're in trouble. If on top of that, I have to still send pestilence among my people. Hmm. We know what pestilence is. Pestilence means diseases that causes death and destruction. You want to tell me you don't know what pestilence is? Don't you hear it in the news every day? It's called COVID nowadays. In case you didn't know. If I send pestilence among my people, I've done all these things, and you still didn't get the message. Verse 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Amen. And I will forgive their sin. Amen. And will heal their land. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you understood or caught that. God says, if my people, which are called by my name, they are bearing my name. You are bearing a family name. You are. You are also bearing <laughs> the surname Christian, whether you realize it or not. God says, my people which are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, if they will get themselves off their high stool, because I'm the manager at, uh, because I am the this and the that, because uh, don't you know how, much, how fat my pocket is? Don't you see my bank balance? Don't you know how many houses and cars and this and that I have? Don't you know my educational prowess? My Bible says if they will humble themselves, bring themselves low, and pray. Are you praying? God says if you will humble yourselves and pray. Part of that humbling yourselves is bringing yourself right low. All those things that you would love to do, love to eat, love to go. You clear them one side. This is serious time. This is serious business we've got in front of us. God, unless you do this thing, you got, you, we're, we're finished. Then, what does the Bible say? My people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face. They're not just blowing grammar into the air and making the air warm. No, 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 no. They are seeking the face of God. God, I've blown it, I know. I know where I've gone wrong. God, I'm sorry. Seek my face and turn. You know, repentance is an action word. It means you have come to the place where you're so sorry for what you've done wrong that you take a personal decision that no way, going forward from here forward, no more. Turn from the wicked way. God says, then will I hear from heaven. <laughs> and forgive their sin. And heal their land. 
<laughs> Does God keep his promises? Yes. God always keeps his promises. Yes. And in the little time before us, we're just going to do a crash case study. In that Psalm, 1 Samuel chapter 7 to verse 14 that we've just read. <laughs> you see, that verse 2 tells us, and it came to pass, while the ark abode in Kajajerim, was the ark supposed to be in Kajajerim? No. While the ark, and remember, the ark represented what? The presence, the presence of God. <laughs> so which means, the presence of God had followed the ark. It was no more where it was supposed to be, in the center of Israel. And the ark, while the ark abode in Kajajerim, that the, the time was long. For it was 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Thank God they lamented. What does it mean to lament? Oh, how come? Oh, no, is that what I lost? Yes, they lamented. Why? Why did they lament? Because the Bible says they, the time was long. Oh, Lord, we lost. We lost and we had shout of victory. We lost and we had the joy of breaking through to salvation. Oh, Lord, we lost. Did I hear those testimonies? Oh, Lord, why is there no more joy in our streets? No more joy in serving you. We hear of the dark ages when Christianity, almost the flicker of, as, of the light of Christianity, as it were, was out. Horrible things were happening that time. Horrible things were happening. And because, you see, when there is darkness concerning the word of God, it accompanies with it spiritual darkness. Spiritual darkness is of the devil. It gives the devil chance to work. That is when you have spiritual confusion. That is when you have... I, I don't know what I believe anymore. Um, I'm not quite sure. Can God still do it? Um, uh, well, no, no, they do it that like this in that place. Like we, we, we can add that to what I, I think I know. Spiritual confusion. Very soon, no more right or wrong. Very soon, idols find a way of joining. Very soon, before long, Open witchcraft, idolatry, devil worship. You can read about the, old, the dark ages. You see what I'm talking about. Why? Because the presence of God was no longer in their midst. People of God, if you or I as an individual, or we as a family, or as a group, or as an entity, or a church, or a society, or a nation, or a country, or a people. If and when God's spirit leaves, we're done for. Yeah. It's all over. We're only simply groping in the darkness. We're only simply, simply you know, the, 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 most, the, 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 the most troubling thing about this is that we may even be doing the same things. For instance, we have an order of service. The organ will play. The choir will then sing. After the choir sings, then this happens. We may even be doing everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everything, as it were, to the letter of the law. But the spirit has long since taken its flight. May God forbid that. Amen. Once the spirit leaves, there's no more power. It's finished. Judges 16, 20 tells us about Samson. He said, I will go out. I shake myself as before. <laughs> and he wished not. Oh, may God forbid that. Amen. You didn't hear. May God forbid that. Amen. May God forbid that for you. Amen. May God forbid that for me. Amen. And he wished not <laughs> that the spirit had left. You want to face the devil without the spirit of God? <laughs> Try it, if you like, but I advise you don't. The seven sons of Skifa, they tried it. 
<laughs> in the name of Jesus, Amen. who Paul preaches, we say, get out of him. Amen. The spirit came out, all right. And passed him. He said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? Who are you? Ah, without Jesus, who are you? <laughs> without Jesus, who am I? Once the spirit of God has left, we're in trouble. May God forbid that. But thank God. Thank God. Thank God. For people like Samuel. Thank God for people of God. Who can still show us the right way. Show us the way back. When the spirit of God has left, what happens? Lack of revival. Spiritual deafness. Preach from now till tomorrow. Mm. Spiritual deadness. Deafness and deadness. No more conviction. <laughs> you know, and the dangerous thing about it is that at a point, you will become so brazenly bold. The thing is that the Bible says in Psalms that angels... They fear to trade. Yeah. Go in there. Yeah. You will. <laughs> angels. Who are angels? Holy beings. They are fearing to trade there. Then you think you are somebody. <laughs> you know you are finished. But. Do you know that's what some of us are doing today? Check yourself. From the hair on your head. Through to the shoe on your foot. Inside, outside, in your home, in your family. Are you not shocked that in that verse that we read, someone told them, if you're going to turn back to God, clear out all those your idols. Idols? Among people of God? Among those called by my name? <laughs> you know that spiritual lukewarmness, it breeds parasites. It breeds parasites. Mm. Things that you would never have expected. Spiritually, physically in your life. <laughs> May God forbid it. Amen. May God forbid it. Amen. Amen. Someone called him back. Do you know the God you are dealing with? Come, 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 come. Let us turn back to God. Let us pray. And they prepared their hearts. To serve God only. We heard it today. Holy, holy. Some of us are doing partial holy. <laughs> and you think when the devil comes, huh, you're going to escape. You have his thing in your pocket. He has every right to attack you. You think when Jesus comes, we heard it this morning, he's looking for those who are holy, holy. Are you holy, holy? The altars of prayers are open.
Without no revive us again, O oh Lord. Amen. Help us, O oh God, as we seek your face on our knees, that we will surrender unto you. O oh Lord, we will come Amen. repentant. O oh Lord God, we will come with a, a, a decision, a determination. Amen. O oh Lord, to leave the idols behind us Amen. and to follow you wholeheartedly. Amen. Those idols you know, O oh God, and we know them. Help us, O oh Lord, Amen. that we will surrender all unto you Amen. and we will serve you afresh. Amen. Come into our hearts anew, O oh God. Amen. Save, O oh Lord. Amen. Sanctify. Amen. Baptize the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Send us home with joy and rejoicing. Amen. Give us our signs again, O oh Lord. Amen. And be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.